Today I want to show you a tapping fixture that I just made and uh, after I used it I thought I had to share this because it really worked out well. The problem came up, uh, as you probably know, I make turning tools and one of the processes I have is these holes here. These are tapped number 1032 thread. That's not a particular problem, but what I want to always do is make sure that I'm perfectly perpendicular to the surface when I put the tap in. Now on the drill press, of course, I get the holes in uh, square and true. But when I'm putting the tap in, I either have to use a drill press to get it started, uh, or some other means, and uh, the other means typically is a what's called a tapping fixture. Um, the one I bought to initially do that looks like this. And the way these work is this right here is effectively a uh, standard tap handle, but the outside bore of the tap handle fits into this sleeve and holds the tap perfectly true to this bottom here, which of course then will be in a perfect 90. And I bought one of these and ended up bringing it back because the way it held the tap, because of the way it was improperly made, the tap was on an angle and it was describing a circle of about three-eighths of an inch at the end. And since it's so rigidly held, there's no way to correct for that. When I brought it back to get another one, the other th two that they pulled off the shelf were made exactly the, the same way, which is terrible. It was an extreme waste of really good metal. Uh, so I had a job to do and I didn't have a tool to do it. And on the way home, I thought of this design, and I made it. What I had on hand was a standard chuck. This chuck is from an old drill, which uh, I replaced the chuck on, because this chuck was not really very great. But it did have one feature that made this uh, project work well, was that a nice straight bore for the outside. That allowed me to drill a hole into a block of wood to guide this. You can see I've got the tap in there right now. The other end was threaded with a 3 8 by 32 inch thread per inch hole. I had a bolt that was threaded that way. And you see this piece of pipe here. This is a quarter pipe. Uh, quarter being the size of the pipe. And um, it's about two and a half inches long because when you put a chuck onto the bolt, you have to have something for it to tighten up against. You could easily, either use a shoulder bolt or as I did here, just put a pipe as a long bushing to take up the gap so that you have a place to drive it with. Uh, you have to tighten it on really well because you're going to be using this in both directions. You can be driving it from this end, so you want it to stay on. And that's uh, I certainly have it in tight enough. So. The next thing I did was make this little block. Now this block is made of modeler's mahogany. You can see it's a uh, laminated construction. And it's very uh, um, stable, I guess is the right term. And that's why model makers used to use this stuff. I have some of it, so I use that for this. Now if you're going to use wood, you'd want to use something really stable. I probably wouldn't go with a 2x4 or something of that sort because it's probably going to warp as the humidity changes. So use something like an exotic or maybe even laminate some uh, wood like this is so that you know you're going to be really stable because once you drill that hole you don't want it to go out of round. Then you have to calibrate it so that when the chuck is in, and I'll put this in upside down so you can see what I'm talking about, that the tap ends up nearly at the bottom where the feet are going to rest. You can see the feet are going to rest here. And that allows you to then have enough range to tap a hole while this slides in that uh, bore. And I calibrated it so that when I my tool is in here this will be uh, a good stack up. Then what I did when I was going to tap these is I would clamp the tool uh, on the bench with a uh, 
just a C-clamp or something just to hold it in place. Then I'd put this over top of it, put this down in the hole, align it with my drill holes, and then drive it with this palm type ratcheting uh, device which I have from ages ago. I don't know if you can still get these, but even just a T-handle with the proper socket on it would work. And then I could put that on here and drive it in. And this worked really well. It holds the tap perfectly perpendicular at all times and it rotates very easily. Now I took uh, some of the slop up because this hole was uh, cut or drilled with a, a Forstner bit. And they only come in a limited range of sizes. So I got one that was close enough but a little bit big so I had to use some of this aluminum tape. Now you can get the aluminum tape. And it's actually aluminum in the tape roll. Um, you probably get it at uh, most of your home depot type stores. It's used for duct work uh, as opposed to duct tape. It's kind of used the same way. And I, in here I used it as a self-adhesive uh, shim stock so that then I know that this will run true in this hole with very limited run out. And the beauty of this not only does it allow you to drill, um, pardon me, to tap the hole perfectly perpendicular every time, but because it's holding it nicely, you know when you use a tap handle on a small tap, you're always concerned about perhaps putting a side load on it and breaking it. That just doesn't happen here, particularly when you're using uh, this palm type drive. So I thought I'd share that with you if you ever have the need to tap holes perfectly perpendicular and you don't happen to have or want to buy a tapping fixture, this is a pretty easy one to make. Again, just a block of wood with the hole to uh, hold the chuck that you happen to have or, or buy. And uh, the mounting means for the chuck so that you can drive this and with the tap. This will cover taps up to about, I think, quarter inch as a size, and that works for me. If you have other sizes, of course, you want to scale it up to accommodate that. I would also probably not use a keyless type chuck because those are uh, released by turning that uh, outer ring by hand. And since you're going to be in the hole here and backing it out, it could perhaps loosen up if it uh, gets a bind on it or something. But just a thought. Um, that's about that for this little video and I hope you can use it.